It can be a personal disaster. A virus can wipe your hard drive clean, destroying years of work. Spyware can steal your personal information and put you, your family, or your finances in danger. We fight back with antivirus software and email filters to block the bugs and spam, but they just keep coming. Even more of a threat is the likelihood that the entire portions of the communications network, a network that handles the world's finances, air traffic control, and many other vital operations, can be taken down, halting activities and even threatening lives. Some of these internet problems are created by hackers, some by criminals, and some are even created by robot programs running out of control. PC World recently estimated that 80% of consumer PCs are infected with spyware. As many as two-thirds of computer users may have been hit by a virus at least once. A recent study by CIO Magazine projected that by the year 2010, computer programmers will discover about 100,000 software vulnerabilities for hackers to exploit during the calendar year. That's one new opportunity every five minutes, of every hour, of every day. The stakes get higher when you consider such things as cyber terrorism and even the threat of cyber warfare. These are some of the issues being discussed by delegates at the second annual Internet Governance Forum held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It is a forum facilitated by the United Nations to allow the people of the world to come together and discuss the future of the Internet, along with their expectations and concerns about this developing technology. This is a place where people from civil society, business, government, and non-governmental organizations can learn from one another, make global connections, and share information that will shape the way the Internet expands. And for these people, one of the most important issues is security. The biggest current threat is uh, deliberate actions by malicious people who want to try and bring the system down for reasons that we don't understand. Um, uh, they, they have the ability to harness system, computers on the system to send message after message after message to a particular place, which in the end results in a denial of service. The system actually breaks down under the, under the enormous load that can be created. Can we respond effectively to security threats while we protect people's rights to privacy and free expression? And how do you come up with rules and responses that cross national boundaries? The challenges are immense. The FBI estimates that in 2006, cybercrime costs totaled about $400 billion. This includes acts of fraud, counterfeiting, intellectual property theft, and the exploitation of stolen passwords, credit card numbers, and other private information. And with the Internet's global environment, criminals have found that they can easily ply their trade while law enforcement agencies in each country struggle through the red tape of tangled international laws and jurisdictions. Freedom of speech and privacy about the right. We need a new kind of rights on the net to, to find a, a relation between the rights the actual rights and the, and the net. Some are calling it the golden age of crime. Here's a sobering warning from one security expert. Do you have a credit card? If so, the criminals already have the number and probably just haven't gotten around to ripping you off yet. In April 2007, the government of Estonia claimed Russia launched a three-week-long cyber warfare attack aimed at shutting down Estonian government offices, banks, and newspapers. All of this a retaliation over Estonia's decision to relocate a Russian war memorial statue. Um, you know, the, the statue of the, the Soviet soldier in the square of most of the East Bloc conquered countries, and they still stand in many of those countries, uh, is locally known by a slang phrase in each of the Baltic and Slavic languages that roughly translates uh, the only Russian soldier who doesn't rape. So the, the, the notion that there was some abrasion and, and political discomfort with that symbol of a, a very uncomfortable era as a social phenomenon in Estonia is not at all surprising. Estonia, which prides itself as having a paperless e-government, said at least six foreign and justice ministry websites were swamped by the attacks. And an Estonian defense ministry spokesman compared the attacks to those launched against the United States on 9-11. The, in, the, the Estonia's internet uh, was attacked by um, informatic pirates and uh, the, the, the several main and critics infrastructure of the country, of the 
were um, in, in a very big danger uh, because of that. Uh, the uh, external insults coming onto their network, the first place they turned to as a uh, provisional member of NATO were their NATO contacts. And through the back channel of the military communications response system, uh, the, at least forensics were able to be done through U.S. interests that have uh, knowledge of how to track down network insults. And there are some pretty strong ideas about where the origins of the attacks were from. Future wars will be fought in network attacks that can cripple a country's infrastructure, shutting down power and water plants, disrupting communication and transportation systems, and even affecting military or defense systems. The people attending the Internet Governance Forum in Brazil say the world must consider the implications of cyber terrorism and cyber warfare. It's, you have this, uh, I don't know, this evolution, this technical possibility that uh, if you block the cyber uh, terrorism, of, co of course you need to keep track, but uh, to, like I said, if you, if you don't evolve, if you don't have an evolution, a development together with, uh, uh, I don't know, with the um, participation, you, you, you don't have all. I really believe that, um, that, that it's a wake-up call that, that we are a generation behind in appropriate mechanisms. If there is going to be a, a UN process, it should be agonizing less about whether or not uh, there is full democratization on the internet and worrying more about whether there is full viability to the internet. A big problem with crime on the internet stems from the fact that different countries have different laws. If a person wants to run an online gambling operation, he can't base it in the U.S. That's illegal. But there are plenty of other places he can take that business and still make it work. Another border's concern is the issue of how to coordinate the effectiveness of various countries' police forces and judicial systems. We need a new kind of rights on the net to, to find a, a relation between the rights, the actual rights, and the, and the net. It's a real challenge to respond to security threats and provide intellectual property protection without dismantling freedom of expression and universal access. The very things that make the internet so powerful. Safety, security and freedom of expression are not antagonistic. And uh, like privacy and security, they can go together. And if it is not, we need to find a way to achieve this goal. Can we have a more secure internet and still protect the freedoms? The civil liberties that allow us to speak our minds as we choose and voice objections to our governments? Can we be secure and still be as creative as we want to be? Write computer programs, do our business and conduct 21st century life? Or are we headed to a new world in which we must register to use the internet? sign in with our government or an international internet personal identification system? Are we willing to have every online move we make tracked all in the name of increased security? When people at the Internet Governance Forum discuss security, they are also discussing coming to an agreement on the definitions of security threats, cybercrime, cyber terrorism, and cyber warfare, cooperation across national borders, taking different legal policies into account, keeping primary internet resources secure, the best way to assure authentication and ID online while maintaining people's privacy, the challenges to privacy in a security environment, and the best ways to assure security in the future for the wireless mobile internet. There is no expectation that governments or organizations around the world can magically come up with security solutions that lessen the threats of viruses, scams, cyber terrorism, or cyber warfare. But we can share our own solutions with others. The way each nation executes its plan to provide some level of security can provide a model for people in other nations. From Rio de Janeiro, I'm Erin Gradwell, reporting for Imagining the Internet and Elon University's School of Communications.